love my dog, and she loves to play outside. When we're in the yard or taking walks, she poops. <laughs> no, not in the toilet. On the grass. That's what dogs do. But we remember to pick it up so the yucky germs stay out of the water. When it rains, water flows right back to our rivers and streams. Picking up after your pet helps keep our water clean. Learn more at wheredoesitgo.org slash pup. Dogs can't flush. Remember to pup. The Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District presents Clean Water Works, a monthly news magazine and your source for local water, sewer, and stormwater news that affects you and your community. Clean Water Works features the people, projects, and programs that are protecting your health and environment. Your sewer district, keeping our Great Lake great. Hi, I'm Ray Whedon. And I'm Jen Elting. We're out here today at our Easterly Wastewater Treatment Plant, and welcome to this edition of Clean Water Works. In today's show, we'll learn a little bit about the Sewer District's maintenance training program. And we'll also take a look at a stream bank restoration project. But first, in today's Sewer University, Frank Greeland will share with us ways the Sewer District is facing current challenges, as well as maintaining our waterways and streams. Hello everyone and welcome to Sewer U, Sewer University. We're going to talk today about the history of sewers and clean water in Northeast Ohio, specifically the greater Cleveland area. I am Frank Greenland. I'm the director of Watershed Programs. This presentation is available on our website at narsd.org slash seweru. I want to end with a discussion of issues, challenges, and solutions uh, and focus a little bit on stormwater. We're in business to protect and enhance water quality in these area streams in Lake Erie in our member communities. A watershed is that area of land that drains to a specific river. When it rains, gravity takes that stormwater runoff to a stream. So in the broadest sense, we're in the Lake Erie watershed. Uh, we also have sub-watersheds, the Cuyahoga watershed, Rocky, Chagrin, uh, and even smaller sub-watersheds to each of those major rivers. So Mill Creek, Big Creek, West Creek feed the Cuyahoga. So we've, that's a watershed. Now watersheds are impacted by sewer overflows, treatment plant discharges, and stormwater runoff. Uh, these are the major watersheds. Pink is the Rocky River Basin, and blue is the Cuyahoga River drainage area. What we call the Lake Erie tributaries are in green, light green. That's Euclid Creek, Doan Brook, Dugway, Nine Mile, there's some others. And in the light orange is the Chagrin River watershed. Now, Rocky, Chagrin, and Cuyahoga watersheds stretch, stretch well beyond the district service area, but we do encompass large portions, particularly the Cuyahoga in its northern reaches. And all those Lake Erie tribs, that's all us primarily. These are the sub watersheds I talked about. So each one of those four big watersheds has their own little watersheds. And I don't know, it's 20, let's say 15 to 20 sub-watersheds. So you live in a watershed area. I don't know where you live, but if you live along Big Creek, you're in the Big Creek watershed area. The district developed a program. The fourth key responsibility of the district was regional stormwater management. And the district developed a program to tackle these stream issues that are largely inter-community in nature. Many communities discharge the Cuyahoga River. And to get a couple communities to fix a problem that emanates from multiple communities, but, or, but the problem's here. Get everyone to fund it and fix it doesn't happen. Rarely happens. So as part of our regional responsibilities, we are responsible to tackle regional stormwater management issues. What looks like streams on this graphic are streams, and that is the district's regional stormwater drainage network. We don't own it. Property owners own the land, but we're responsible for maintenance activities and to correct problems, water quality problems, flooding problems, and erosion problems across this network. And I think we're inching towards 450 miles of drainage is under the district's responsibility. These are the key issues in stormwater runoff. It is not clean, so there are numerous water quality issues that stormwater runoff poses or creates. Flooding and erosion in our area is pretty significant. 
These streams, because of more development, more impervious surface, that means more stormwater volume and it gets there faster. So the streams are getting beaten up. Impervious surface is hard surface. Roads, sidewalks, your house, rooftops. You've changed the landscape. This area was not what it is today. And I'll show you some graphics, but it's hard surface. And when you lay a hard surface, the ability of stormwater, a rain event to go into the ground is dramatically reduced. So what happens is it runs off and the volume of runoff gets to the stream, much greater volume, and it gets there like this. And streams were sized for a certain amount of runoff. And as we've developed and built out, and it's not just a local phenomenon, this is going on everywhere, these streams have to adjust. And when they adjust, they down cut, they side cut, they erode, and now, you know, houses are threatened, roads are threatened, bridges are threatened, so that, that constant meandering and erosion, accelerated erosion is causing problems across the region. This was a 1975 uh, supplemental judgment entry by Judge McMonagall, and the judge mandated that the district develop a, a plan to tackle this issue not just wastewater collection, but storm drainage. And that plan was to, to, to result in a program to tackle what the judge called inter-community drainage issues, both storm and sanitary across the district. And the inter-community term is really key. And think of the Cuyahoga River, you know, by the time it gets to Cleveland, I don't know how many communities have, have sent flow to that stream. And a lot of times these problems are at the downstream reaches of these streams. So the judge mandate that a regional entity tackle that because it was going to be very difficult for multiple communities to, to come together at the right time to solve the problem. So the district under its 6119, where a state statute run organization, Ohio 6119, gives us the authority to run a stormwater program. Our board of trustees adopted the program in 2010. Uh, and the reason they adopted it is these problems were accelerating. We had done multiple studies and the problems were accelerating over time. We did studies in the 70s, early 90s, 2000 time frame. All we were seeing in discussions with communities is the problems are increasing in scope, size and cost. That led to the creation of the district stormwater program. Our waste stormwater service area almost mirrors the wastewater service area of the district, the sewage collection area. A few communities are not part of the stormwater. There's 62 in the wastewater. I think we're at 56 in the stormwater program, but it's essentially the same. That is a satellite image of the impervious surface coverage in our service area. And the dark color is not grass, it's impervious surface. And if it was grass, you'd see a lot of infiltration, but it's not. So you're seeing a lot of runoff and the runoff hits these small streams and they're resizing themselves. And that's why we have the erosion, flooding, water quality issues we have. And this is the equation. Um, if you have natural ground cover, it's gonna promote deeper, shallow and deep infiltration. A lot of that stuff's gonna go into a forested area or grass. Less will run off to the river and you'll have your evapotranspiration. But you want some groundwater in there to recharge a stream so that the stream holds flow all the time. And a lot of our watersheds, sub-watersheds are in the 40 to 50 percent impervious range, which is extremely high. It does not promote deep infiltration, which means you're not recharging streams, which means in dry weather there's like this much flow in a stream, and in wet weather it's going crazy. So that's not real healthy from the aquatic community side of things. Um, so we've changed the game, and our job is to deal with this situation and try and improve this situation for the area streams. Here's a good example of erosion. This is Chippewa Creek, tributary of the Cuyahoga River. It's pretty close uh, to a condominium development. And the district now has an active project that's moving into the design phase as we speak to tackle this erosion issue. Flooding is another issue. This is the border of Middleburg Heights and Brook Park. This is Sheldon Road. Uh, over Abram Creek. And Abram Creek routinely floods virtually every year, at least once, maybe a couple times. So this is an inner community issue and we currently have a Rocky River 
stormwater master planning study that's looking at what's the right solution here. This was a few years ago. This is Mill Creek along Warner Road. And if you know that Warner Turney area, it's busy. It's really busy. And we were watching erosion along Mill Creek. And then all of a sudden, I think it was a February storm, we lost that big chunk. And so the stream was, I mean, the, the bank was over here. And then all of a sudden, boom, it's gone. And one more drop, and there goes Warner Road. So this is an erosion problem, example of erosion that we temporarily stabilized as an emergency action and it's still holding. And again, a master plan will figure out what's the long-term fix. This is what you see out in the field. This is a debris rack along Dugway Brook doing a great job of trapping debris. The problem is you got to remove debris. <laughs> and when you don't remove debris, you're creating a dam. And what you're seeing here is on the sides of that debris rack, accelerated erosion, and that debris rack is going to go bye-bye soon. So we have maintenance forces in place to tackle this and clean those racks so we don't lose those racks. I love this one. This is the washer-dryer solution to erosion at the local level. This is a property owner on Stickney Creek who's having erosion and must have had a plethora of washers and dryers you know, at his or her disposal. But that's not the kind of fix that's going to work long term. And Stickney's a regional stream, so we will evaluate what's the best fix. But if you look behind the washers and dryers, you can see a lot of erosion. So it's not working. Almost as creative as the 55-gallon drum tire guardrail solution. Again, this is along Baldwin Creek. And Baldwin's pretty beat up. So there's a lot of erosion. So these are not long-term fixes. And the district's job is to determine what are the right fixes. That's Sewer University. Cleveland's early sewers served to simply transport sewage away from the city's growing population. But eventually, they became the conduit through which wastewater traveled to our three wastewater treatment plants. Along the way, the sewers fueled the development of outer ring suburbs by providing them with access to Cleveland's sewer system and treatment plants. Unfortunately, this increased the frequency and volume of sewage overflows in the combined sewer system. When the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District was formed in 1972, the city of Cleveland transferred 107 miles of interceptors to it. The court order also charged the district with constructing new interceptors, among them the Southwest and Heights Hilltop Interceptor Sewers. Both were built in the 1980s and 90s, and both are separate sanitary interceptors designed to prevent suburban sanitary sewage from entering Cleveland's combined sewer system. Instead, the sewage takes an express route to our southerly and east wastewater treatment plants. The Southwest and Heights Hilltop interceptors significantly reduced the discharge of dry and wet weather flow from separate suburban sewer systems into the Cleveland combined sewer system. And now we will hear from our watersheds team as they explain a stream bank restoration project in collaboration with the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. So when I-71 came in, what they did is they straightened Big Creek to get it out of the way of I-71. And uh, in the past, Big Creek was much longer, and so it dealt with the grade control throughout a longer stretch of that stream. When they straightened it, they had to address that loss of grade, and they did that by putting in a drop structure, essentially a waterfall. Well, since that was put in, you know, 50, 60 years ago, um, that started to erode through the high velocities of Big Creek, the flashiness from all the impervious surface and runoff and everything, it has uh, eroded the uh, concrete and really done a, done a number on that grade control. So we're coming in here, we're going to remove that structure, and we're going to put in a ramp. So we're going to soften that grade control structure into a elongated ramp. So this will be better um, to slow down some of those velocities and everything. It'll also provide some fish passage, allow those fish to go upstream and uh, we'll take care of that, uh, that eroding, failing concrete along the wall. So it's much needed. Uh, this was failing, it was starting to encroach upon John Nagy Boulevard, which is right here, and into the parking lot, so it was becoming a real safety issue. And so through the Regional Stormwater Management Program, we're able to come out here and address those problems. My 
name is Lee Hall and I'm the fossil preparator at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. And the museum is out here at Big Creek today because we are looking at the rocks for fossils of ancient fish that lived about 360 million years ago in the Devonian. And these include giant armor-headed predators like Dumphalosteus and also some of the earliest complete shark fossils ever known. So we think we're going to find fossils here because we know the geology. We're looking at a deposit called the Cleveland Shale. And within the Cleveland Shale, historically, over the last 100 years in this area, we found these fossils before. So we know they're here. It's just a matter of looking and seeing uh, if we're going to get lucky. Paying your sewer bill helps keep our Great Lake great, but paying that bill can sometimes be difficult. That's why the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District has expanded its cost-saving programs to help customers lower their bills. To see if you qualify, call 216-881-8247 or visit neorsd.org slash save. Your Sewer District, keeping our Great Lake great. Did you know flushing your expired or unused medications can be harmful to the environment? Wastewater treatment plants are not equipped to remove pharmaceuticals from wastewater, and when the treated water is released into the Cuyahoga River and Lake Erie, it can still contain traces of these medicines. The best way to dispose of unwanted medicine is to check for a local collection event. The Cuyahoga County Sheriff's Drug Drop Box Program allows residents to deposit unwanted prescription drugs at drop boxes across the county. To find a drop-off location, Visit rxdrugdropbox.com or call 211. The Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District also makes it easy to pitch those pills and safely dispose of unwanted medications at our free pharmaceutical collection events. If you are unable to attend a pharmaceutical collection, there are ways to safely dispose of medications at home. Visit neorsd.org slash pitch those pills for more information. Protect water quality and your family by disposing of pharmaceuticals properly and safely. Welcome back. And today we're here at the Easterly Wastewater Treatment Plant and we're going to be talking with John Boyd, who is a plant utility maintenance person here at Easterly. John uh, is a recent graduate of the district's uh, maintenance training program and he's going to tell us a little bit about the program and a little bit about this building that we're in, the pump building. Welcome, John. Hi. Thank you, How Ray. are you today? Good, and yourself? John, John, can you tell us a little bit about the maintenance training program at the sewer district? Yes. Um, the maintenance training program um, at the sewer district started about uh, four years ago, um, and it was a four-year training program. Um, you basically learn all the different skills, trades of things such as welding, pipe fitting, um, you know, hydraulics, all different types of things that go on in the maintenance plants today. And um, it was really a very intense um, courses that you took um, in-house and out of in school and try seek uh, schooling and things of that nature. And uh, it was very much a really good educational experience. So. so when you started the training program, did you hire in as a maintenance trainee or how did you get started? Well, actually, um, I was currently a maintenance worker here at the sewer district. Um, and there was a um, big uh, good thing happening as far as the program going, so I basically tested into it. Um, I believe they called it the Amtech test at the time and uh, placed into that and uh, was able to score high enough to get into the maintenance training program. 
So you said you tested in, so it wasn't just an automatic fill out an application. No, no you did have to you test have to in. You qualify. Mm -hmm. So there's some standards in order to be Absolutely. part of this team. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wonderful. So John, uh, this building that we're in, we're standing in front of some pretty old equipment. Do you yeah. ever work on equipment in this building? Um, actually, I do. Um, every week, periodically, I actually perform a uh, preventative maintenance check on, on the equipment. Uh, these are actually the uh, centrifugal blowers that we use to um, supply air to our activated sludge system here in the plant. And so I just basically check the oil, the temperature, and um, really make sure that it's still up to par. Um, these blowers are pretty old, 1930s. So. Um, very good to have. So you said the blower is from the 1930s, mm -hmm. and here we are in 2018. So that <laughs> kind of lets us know the importance mm -hmm. of having a, a bona fide maintenance training program. Yeah. John, is there any advice you can give uh, someone who may be currently employed by the Sewer District mm -hmm. or not employed in, uh, about how to get started in a maintenance training program? Um, I would really suggest that um, please stay in tuned into the website and making sure that you know, positions coming up and really just keeping the whereabouts as far as the district goes and, um, you know, go through the proper procedures, looking for the people and um, looking for the Amtec test that they have coming out and testing into that and uh, keep your fingers crossed. Okay. Well, John, I want to thank you again for joining us today. Not a problem. Very, very informative. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Clean Water Works. Be sure to stick around all year long as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the infamous Cuyahoga River Fire.